All right, I know what you guys are thinking. This guy's definitely cheating, <laughs> but I'm not. See, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, I wanted to get a high score in this mode in aim lapse. 244,000, that's like more than double what I did. Which I would definitely be able to do unless, hypothetically, I got an eye infection and had blurry vision. Just gotta fix my eye infection, man. Now, one might go get some eye drops to cure the eye infection, except the eye drops were 250 bucks. Seems like a scam to me. I don't wanna do that. I don't want to still hypothetically speaking of course i just want to replace my eye on my own that that means this isn't cheating this is just an anti-scammer eye replacement exoskeleton device this video is sponsored by the colony lumidesk with its advanced cable management system exceptional lift speed and collision avoidance more info on this later Neuromuscular aim assist was interesting, but this time I wanted a score, like a number on screen that could tell me definitively if the engineering improved my abilities. When I was locked in, trying as hard as I could, 135,000 is the best yeah, I could like do. Hard stuck at 135,000. So can I build an exoskeleton that improves this? This is going to take three things. One, exoskeleton movement of the mouse. The robotics move me to move the mouse not cheating because it's me. Two, I need finger clicky exoskeleton to help me click when the crosshair is on the target. Blurry vision, hard to see edges. And then I need an eyeball. Let's freaking go, baby. Basically a computer vision program that's gonna locate the enemies and tell the exoskeletons what to do. Originally, I was just gonna steal someone else's exoskeleton design and download it, print it, oh, call yeah. it my own. That didn't work. I then considered a sling that has a hinge on it, and I thought I could just put a motor on the hinge, but that doesn't necessarily give me the movement I need that's more of like an oblique movement. I finally landed on putting a motor on my forearm that could be attached to some strings that pull my wrist. I'm gonna spin and have a pulley on it and grab my wrist. Reviewing the footage, I could see that I primarily missed left and right, not so much up and down. So that's where I need the most assistance. This feels good. I first thought I'd need some sort of like hinge system on my wrist. So I need a hinge like right here. But then I realized that my bones are a hinge. Like I'm not using this thing to try and lift 300 pounds. I just need to move a mouse. So I just use my wrist and probably not break it. I designed it in such a way that I could just strap it to my arm with Velcro, which is super convenient. The difficulty here is that I need a motor that's totally limp. It needs to let my wrist move naturally, but then assist it when it needs the assistance. Ah! I ended up with a gimbal motor attached to a DIY skateboard speed controller. These are designed so that a program can control the torque and speed, but also totally turn it off so that the motor spins freely and I can move like normal. I measured it, the whole patterns and everything, and made a spot for it to go on my arm. Then I made this little gear attached to some Kevlar line that should run down these little holes and then could clip onto this glove and then theoretically pull my hand left and right, depending on what commands I send to its controller. Motor mounts upside down right there. The gear goes right here. This big thing is for the structure of the motor because it's gonna have a lot of torque. And then the Kevlar passes through there, goes down the forearm. Uh, and once again, theoretically, that should be it. And thanks to the LumaDesk's built-in footrest and hefty lift speed, I could plop down for the next step of the project. I was going for more Iron Man and ended up with more Spider-Man. For the finger clicky exoskeleton, I was originally gonna go with one of these stroke rehab gloves, but the movements would be too slow and it looks super clunky. I ended up going with this thing, <laughs> which is designed to read the position of your fingers and control other things. Now I'm just going to have a pin right here that's programmable. Pin will be right there and it'll just So I modified it, that way I could attach a solenoid. I dropped the solenoid in some epoxy. But at last it was attached and I let it cure for a couple days. Before I could move on to the actual computer vision program, I had to just, you know, I just had to assemble it together and get basic functionality to know that the motors worked and everything. That only took me about a day. Uh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, why's a, why's, a, why's a rooster crow? Whoa, whoa, calm down. Wait a minute. Why is the rooster crowing so much, man? No, come on, why are you doing that? With my own two eyes, I will observe the stinking pinout. So this is an encoder. It tells the position of the motor to the vest controller so that it can accurately control it. Ah, it's really hot. I may have cooked it, not sure. There's a chance that I just cooked the encoder. But it wasn't giving me accurate readings. Flickering. 
That's the issue. Don't have a solid connection to read the degrees of change. So I could get the motor spinning, but without the encoder, it's not going to spin accurately. The encoder wasn't working. I had it wired right. The encoder wasn't working, but you know what was good? Look what came in the mail today. Ordered a backup, bro. I'm a grown man now. I order backups for things. I had a backup encoder that I had ordered like 30 days before that from China. This is supposed to be like the easy part, so I was pretty frustrated at this point. This was really nice. 30 minutes later, it was working. No way. No freaking way. Is what I would say if I was freaking Mark Rober, dude. What? Th wrong channel, brother. No. No encoder. No way there's no encoder. It's a wrong channel, brother. I was crashing out in Cantonese. Oh, no, no, man, I was telling no, they forgot the encoder. They forgot the encoder. Next day, I got the encoder. Got the encoder in. Didn't fix it. Is it? Is it? Is electronic speed controllers. The other thing that it attaches to that wasn't making it read. So I replaced that thing. I overnight one again, dude. That didn't fix it either. Wow. You know what it was? <laughs> You're not even getting the road. <laughs> Why is it upside down, though? Wait a minute. What? They've got it upside down. Their website has it upside down. I promise it's upside down. I'm not crazy. <laughs> it was my wiring. My wire. I just had a wire in the wrong crazy. side. Just this it. wire. <laughs> <laughs> so, Is it right long there? story short. That's the correct wiring, okay? <laughs> I got it. You don't need to crash out in Cantonese. I guess I'm just dumber than some of the... <laughs> I guess I'm just dumb. Oh. My. Goodness. <laughs> my bad. I freaked out a little. My bad. <laughs> my goodness. It only took like five days. Huh, not bad. <laughs> man, I'm fine now. I did it. Yeah, man. That wasn't all though, okay? So This I is an NVIDIA Jetson AGX Orin. These are specifically designed for robotics. You got the 40 pin header right here where you plug your robotics into, right? Wrong. Incorrect. See, this is a BTS 7960 H-Bridge thingy. Basically, it'll let me swap the polarity of the power going into the solenoid by telling these two pins, yes, go, or no, don't go, which is just what I need. Now it's gonna move. The pin. What? What? But you know where you can't control these pins from? These pins. You can't do that. Eye infection, bro. I don't have an eye infection, okay? I gotta come clean. I don't have an eye infection. I'm Took me a couple days to figure that out. <laughs> you connect a little microcontroller to the pins on the front of the Jetson, and then that can control the H bridge. Bum, bum, bum. You see how that's going just like normal speed? Well, we're going to turn that up to like 9 million. Now, before we go any further, I gotta show you this desk, pay for the project, you know what I'm saying? This is the coolest desk I've ever used. My nerdy Linux brain shucked off the plain desk mindset as soon as I installed this absolute, like, beefy second tier attachment thing with the pegboard attached. The bolts were like this big that went into that thing. The bolts were gigantic. You got like tablets on there, like a phone mount spot. I got my, I got my remotes on there. It feels like I'm sitting at a tank with a built-in footrest. A tank with a footrest and collision avoidance and a built-in cable management system this is the way every desk should be one wire one wire going in to power it and then that feeds directly into a cable management thing so you've got your power on the inside then everything can be inside there so you try to go up and down you're not going to rip all the wires out you mount your monitor to the tank tier everything is contained like even the even the pc can be mounted to the freaking desk dude they got this attachment pc hanging off the side cables managed inside stand up sit down don't have to worry about ripping things out of the walls which i've done before before. You don't want to do that. <laughs> I have never realized how useful a massive drawer could be until I went like five years without one. And this th this thing's heavy, dude. I don't know what they built it out of, but I about popped the disc out of my back trying to move it. It's solid, bro. If there's a tornado coming at you, get under it. Not real safety advice, though. So thank you, Colomy, for sponsoring this video and sending me the Luma Desk all in one. Electric height adjustable desk. Genuinely the coolest desk I've ever used. My nerd stimulation gets going just thinking about it. It. So check my link in the description. They help support this video. They also put up with me. What? I was really late. You know, look into purchasing one with the link in the description. Thank you. Now here's where this gets significantly harder than the neuromuscular aim assist. Neuromuscular aim assist 
just had to beat human reaction time, which is actually pretty trash. It was like 200 milliseconds to actually help with your aim in the game. It needs to be like sub 25 milliseconds latency. It needs to be near real time. Otherwise, you're just going to get jitter back and forth and it's going to make it worse. Now, we all know that a robust and reliable anti-cheat system would tell us if this were cheating. So I wanted to make sure that couldn't happen by just pointing a camera at the screen this time instead of using screen capture. No, it's not detectable. You can't detect this. There's literally no way to detect this outside of a $3 billion AI. All right, so here's the setup with latency counter. The image of the monitor itself hits the camera same time I see it. It's 90 frames per second, so each frame lasts 11 milliseconds. It's a global shutter USB camera, so one to three milliseconds of latency for the USB connection. Mounted directly to the desk with the LumaDesk's robust modular design. That means to get sub 25 milliseconds latency, we need the program to find the target on the screen, send output to our exoskeleton to do the right thing, all in under like 11 milliseconds, which is basically like, that's like so real time, dude, that's so fast. I had to manually Manually train a yellow vision model to target the blue orb targets and aim labs. Once that was ready, I could just plug that into my camera programming thing, right? Wrong! Wrong again, dude. You're getting everything wrong. What a dummy. That would be slow and worthless. You have to convert it into like a tensor RT engine file thing. My understanding of this is like it's it, it's like tailoring a suit to fit perfect. Where the yellow vision model is the suit and the Jetson is the uh the human. So it perfectly fits the Jetson and can do the inferencing faster. Once that was done, I balanced a glass of water on the back of my neck for days and programmed it to do this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, <laughs> dude. Oh my! The Jetson receives the USB camera feed. It finds the target on the screen with the tensor model and determines if it's to the right or the left, how far it is, and turns the gear accordingly. Oh, that's insane! This pulls on the Kevlar line to turn my wrist. When the crosshair is within the bounding box of the target, it cycles the solenoid attached to my pointer finger 10 times per second. And the aim assist worked exactly like my brain imagined. This feels weird. And then it broke. We broke it. It's broken. The Kevlar line came loose. The line falling off the gear was my biggest concern all along. I thought that's what had happened, but it turns out I just didn't know how to tie a knot. It just untied, which really is like best case scenario. As far as it breaking... Instead of tethering to the glove like I had originally planned, I ended up looping the line between my fingers with a rubber band. That way it's got just a little bit of tension so it doesn't slip off the line. The knot had come undone, so I just tied it back together. Right there? Yeah. Okay, babe, it's on fire. She didn't ask a single question. It was just like, here's the lighter you asked for, sweetie. It's on there. And tried to do the best I could. Oh, oh, oh! Oh. And it broke again before I could finish and compare again. my score. It was silly that tying a knot seemed like the only issue. I crimped the lines down, came back later that evening to try again. Nice crumb, Jim. <laughs> Still looks pretty sick. Here we go. The green light on the vest controller turns on when assistance is being given. The solenoid is pelting my pointer finger when the crosshair is on the target. Whoa! Something about it being my hand, but with better accuracy, it was truly wild. I can feel the assistance! Oh, that's wild! Yo! What's funny though is that it did take some practice. Like I had to learn to keep my wrist softer. My, I, I think it was like, like my wrist was really stiff. I could feel it tugging and it's working. Like flexing my arm gave me less assistance. Let's try again. And my aim truly looked oh, dude. better. That's the trick, dude. You gotta let it take over. This seemed like a full success. Total proof of concept. Oh, it works. And I beat my high score. Like, it just works. Oh, yo, I beat my high score. I beat my high score. I beat my high score. Like By 3%. Dude, that's insane. As cool as that was, this wasn't it. Target achieved. No. Yeah, so the average FPS was 27 with an average latency of 36 
point one. The total latency camera to arm was just under 50 milliseconds, which don't get me wrong, that's insane. It puts neuromuscular aim assist to shame. So it's not like it was bad, but it's not my goal. My goal was sub 25. I knew that's what I needed if I even wanted to get close to the high score. I technically beat my high score. Could I have done that by aim training? <laughs> no. Shut up. <laughs> Dude, shut up. But this wasn't the only issue. The solenoid was hitting the back of my pointer finger exactly like it was supposed to, but it wasn't actually causing me to click. And lastly, I wanted it to pull my wrist even if it was stiff. I wanted my aim to look a little more robotic. Both motors need more voltage to make it pull harder. I didn't want to like break my wrist. This is an incredibly unique camera that I ordered from a company based out of India. It's 120 FPS global shutter, which immediately shaves three milliseconds. But more importantly, it connects to the Jetson with what's called CSI2, which again, shaves another three milliseconds. But even more than that, what this does is essentially bypasses the CPU and puts the raw feed directly into the tensor model. And I knew it would be fast, but I didn't know it'd be this fast. I upped the voltage and changed the power delivery method of the piston on my finger. I also optimized the code so it should push forward harder and backwards less. Powering on the solenoid. Nothing exploded. Powering on the VESC. New power delivery method. There we go. Fresh chrome installed. And the most complex code I've ever produced. Enabling. Please work, please work, please work. Loaded successfully. <gasps> Everything seems to be working. Okay, here we go. The latency was reading nine milliseconds from program to wrist movement, leaving the total latency at just 17 milliseconds. Oh my goodness, that feels insane! It's so responsive now! This was best case scenario. Oh, if I just let my finger go limping! <laughs> but after just a few short rounds, That's insane. the weakness of my flesh... You just have to let the robot take over! ...fled. This feels... Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness! I played for hours with this thing on. Never have I had this much fun with something that I built. I got second. I couldn't beat the guy on top. But it begs the question, what if someone took neuromuscular aim assist, combined it with exoskeletal aim assist to make a neuromuscular exoskeletal aim assist device? I guess somebody should do that. Just passing through.